Hey, what's up, Kim peeps? Who's ready for another fantastic Kim bid? What in the heck are we gonna do? So our big goal again, figure out whether the reaction is thermodynamically favorable, simply by looking at the values of delta H, delta S, and delta G. Breaking it down a little bit, number one, we're going to define Gibbs free energy, and number two, we're then going to calculate Gibbs free energy change from the standard free energies of formation of the reactants and products in a chemical reaction. First, what the heck is Gibbs free energy? It's just the amount of energy in a reaction that can be used for work. Although in many cases, most of the free energy is lost in the form of heat. And a standard free energy of formation is the free energy change when one mole of a substance forms from its elements in their standard states under standard conditions, and has the symbol delta G sub F. And it's important to keep in mind that elements by definition are gonna have a value of zero as sort of a reference point or starting point. So just as we looked at enthalpies of formation, Gibbs free energies of formation equations are going to be, again, showing the formation of one mole of a compound from its elements in their standard states. And as you take a look at a list of Gibbs free energy changes, most things will have a Gibbs free energy change that's negative. They'll spontaneously form from their elements. There are a few that are positive, but those things aren't commonly found. Now, we've got an equation to help us determine the Gibbs free energy change from Gibbs free energy of formations. It's provided to you on your screen, in your notes, and on your formula chart. Again, it's just looking at the sum of the Gibbs free energy changes of formation of the products and the sum of the Gibbs free energy of formation of the reactants. Important to note that if Gibbs free energy change is greater than zero, the reaction is not thermodynamically favored, and energy must be added in order for the reaction to occur. Reactant formation is favored. So again, positive delta G, non-spontaneous, not thermodynamically favored, energy has to be put in in order for that reaction to proceed. On the other hand, if Gibbs free energy is less than zero, then the reaction is thermodynamically favored. No outside source of energy needs to be added. Product formation is favored. Boom, negative delta G, spontaneous, thermodynamically favored, no outside source of energy required. And then lastly, if Gibbs free energy is equal to zero, the reaction is at equilibrium. Reactant and product formation are equally favored. And although you've seen this before, we're gonna come back and hit it again, that relationship between Gibbs free energy and the equilibrium constant can be expressed by using that formula on your screen, negative rat link. Just remember, we're gonna be using the energy constant 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin for the R value in this formula. Let's do a quick Gibbs free energy calculation here using Gibbs free energies of formation. Calculate delta G for the following reaction using the data provided. Again, we're provided a series of Gibbs free energy changes of formation. So we're just gonna use the following formula. Boom, plug and a chug. Three moles CO2 gas plus four moles H2O gas minus one mole propane plus five moles. Oh my goodness, where's oxygen? Remember Gibbs free energy. Remember Gibbs free energies of formation of your elements in their standard states are gonna be zero kilojoules per mole. Always a great idea to set it up even if it's zero kilojoules per mole. Be explicit. Calculator. Three times negative 394 inch plus parentheses four times negative 229 close parentheses. The sum of our Gibbs free energies of formation of our products, negative 2,098 kilojoules per mole. Minus, don't even need my calculator here, negative 24 kilojoules per mole. Back to the calculator. Minus negative Gibbs free energy change of the reaction, negative 2,074 kilojoules per mole. Boom. 